Whoa there, Space Cowboy. Brokeback Bebop is a podcast with explicit content intended only for mature bounty hunters. Listener discretion is advised. Listen to all 40 steamy sessions of the show right now by supporting Brokeback Bebop at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay. Three, two, one, let's jam! I feel violated. You should. Welcome everybody, hello, glad you're here to hang out with us on Brokeback Bebop. I'm Zach. I'm Steven. I don't know, do we usually do that at the beginning of these? I'm still kind of figuring out I don't know. a little bit, like, if there's any type of facade with this one, you know? There is a little <laughs> bit, but is there... People know who we are, right? The lacy curtain has been pulled down. Let's see. Oh, people know who we are if they're here, but they don't know everything about us, do they? No, let's tell them. That's what I was thinking. Can we think Where of one thing about each of us that the listeners, give or take like your mom and Danny perhaps, mm-hmm. that what the listeners might not know about us. And I'll start with one about me. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I was expelled from a Christian school. Wow. Boom, I don't it think... feels good. Wait Have off my you shoulders. mentioned that? Uh, maybe vaguely, but I don't think I've said expelled. I'm not going to go into details. I could. And it's kind of a funny story. Maybe I will sometime, but I'm not going to right now. What about you? Give us some fire. You give us some embarrassing stories all the time, though. Uh, a I favorite do. is yelling Schnell or, or yelling something at a yeah. uh, uh, Diary of Anne Frank. Mm-hmm. Yell- yelling <laughs> is a, a strong word. I that's just such a story of legend and I'm not going to tell it again. We've told it. Before. It, it has like grown. It had grown to like such a massive point to the point where you like got on stage and started kicking and, you know, and ha- howled Hitler in my pre Nazi uniform. Hitler. Go ahead. Well, what's your secret? Give us something juicy. Um, let's see. I, uh, hmm. Bonus points. If you could think of something I don't know. Oh, okay. I used to work at a grocery store. I did and know that. And I, uh, we got like half off on groceries. And you just took the groceries? A lot of the time, yeah. At the end of the night, <laughs> I would just pack a grocery bag full of whatever I needed, and I would just leave for the night. <laughs> Look, I am a, now, you can pay for your groceries, or maybe you couldn't have. I don't know. It was rough back then. What I do say, though, really in any situation, I personally believe, and I could understand why you would believe otherwise, but I personally believe that if you see someone stealing food from a grocery store, no, you didn't. Yeah. Like, kind I, of I never was someone who was, like, trying to fuck with people. Some people were, like, on, like, hey, you, let me check your receipt make sure that matched all the stuff. Yeah. And I was like, dog, this is a discount grocery store. Yeah. Which, by the way, I the only reason I'm, I'm okay with you, and I'm not somebody who is generally a, much of a klepto, but... One, I was Much really broke of. at the time. Yeah. And two, the entire existence of this grocery store was just to take money from Aldi. We lost about a million and a half dollars every year as one store anyway, but Kroger like owned us. And so the whole point was just to have our prices be a little bit lower than Aldi. To like just fuck with Aldi? Yeah, that was the entire existence of where I worked. Okay. Hey, Crazy, light right? light segue into Cowboy Bebop before we talk about the episode. Yes, we were members of our very own crime syndicate, if you That's will. what I was getting to, something they really don't know about us. <laughs> I was thinking, what are some of your favorite uh, mafia movies? Do you like mafia movies? Have you seen a lot? I do or like mafia other, movies. other, like, mafia crime uh, family type anime, even? Sure, those I'm do sure exist. I'm sure there are, um, yeah. I grew up watching a lot of action movies. I just grew up watching a lot of movies, I guess. But yeah. a lot of action movies, so my mom really That's liked it. So absolutely like the, what brought us both here where we are yeah. right now. Right? So a lot of, like, hyper-violent, super gory. Like, I watched a lot of Tarantino movies nice. you know, growing up and things like that. So I I like I – mean, obviously, Goodfellas is, like, a famous – I was going to say Goodfellas, obvious. I like Casino so good. better than Goodfellas. I have I not like seen Goodfellas. Casino. I was never really into mafia movies, so I've only seen mm-hmm. a few, but I need to. I need to see yeah. more. What else? Surprisingly, maybe, given what movies I have seen, I have only seen 
parts of all the Godfather movies. Yeah, I've I've not watched any of them in their entire. Honestly, they're one of those movies that feel a little like homework to try to sit through. I'm sure they're Mm. great. I'm sure I'd love them, but there's three of them. They seem really long. They're kind of old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like a lot of the people that are in the movies, so. though. There's no Iron Men in them, so I'm not interested. That's fair. Well, you got to watch the third one. You may be surprised. I'm trying to think of what other like crime syndicate movies that I like. Well, I, John Wick, I think, is a good example of a modern one. I'm thinking about kind of feel, watching and those. It's pretty good. My hot um, take, though, I, I really love the Matrix movies. I kind of want to see John Wick because of it. I don't think I'm a, a Keanu Reeves stan. I think he's kind of a bad actor. I'll say I it. think Keanu Reeves is great at doing what he's been asked to do for the last well at least 20 years. He's one of the best in the business when it comes to fight choreography because in those Matrix movies that's him doing so much of that. That's the yeah. whole cast doing so much of that. And I know he's continued to do that and put a lot of work into it. But as far as like reading a line, like delivering dialogue, I don't know if he's gotten that much better. I, I feel like he hasn't. Uh, but sometimes in the Matrix he's just like Whoa. <laughs> Have so you the seen whole world Speed? Isn't real? No, I haven't. Speed's good. That okay. was probably the first Keanu Reeves movie I remember seeing. Okay. Funny enough. I like that one. That's when he's on the bus, right? And the bus can't stop. Or it'll I just up. said I haven't seen it, buddy. <laughs> That's the one where, like, I imagine he and Sandra there are Bullock are on that I bus. I there's cars. That sounds right. I no, think the whole plot of the movie I'm is they're, like, sure on that's a bus. the blind side. Doesn't it's she like Crank. Like, with Jason Statham, Keanu where if he like stops having sex, he'll hard, him his how heart to will play stop. football on the bus. The bus is Jason Statham, and it's all a metaphor for racism. Yeah, thank you. Any so last you mafia movie thoughts? Yeah, um, I <laughs> like mafia movies. I think they have a a history of being kind of long and slow burn ish. Yeah, um, they seem a little samey. Usual Usual Suspects, if that counts. I haven't seen it to movie. the end. I had the end spoiled for me before, sure. uh, before I saw In it. Happy Endings? Did that spoil it for you? I don't know what it was. I think it was when I worked at the family video. I think someone was like, you should... I think someone was like, you should really watch The Usual Sus- Suspects if you haven't seen it. And I was like, okay. And then someone, the next person was like, ah, Usual Suspects. Isn't that fucked up when the the spoiler from a 40-year-old movie happens? Damn. Yeah. I'm like, well... Not watching this one anymore. Yeah, it's kind of like the sixth sense, right? I mean, once you know, once you know that there's charm. there's only five senses. Once you know that, <laughs> the sixth one is a joke. <laughs> that is just well, it's not inherent to Earth, so why would yeah. I care about it? Let's exactly. talk about Cowboy Bebop. We're on episode session five. Session five. It's the Ballad of Fallen Angels. Yeah, Zach, this is one of the most famous episodes of the show. I was excited for you to get to this one. This is I like can one of the see most that the first ones. episode heavily alludes to it so i could see why this is one of the big ones the episode was storyboarded by a name we've seen before shinichiro watanabe it was directed by tetsuya watanabe is it racist to ask if they're related our our last name is very very common in japan or would they maybe be related uh, some last names are pretty common watanabe Watanabe do you think okay Mm -hmm. I'm ignorant. I'm not trying to be... Okay. It's written No, by... all of Japan is going to fucking hate you now, Zach. Congrats. We just dropped to number eight. They've got to be Japan. at least cousins, right? <laughs> I think they're married. And it was written by... Is that true? I don't know. I didn't hear the first names because you're kind of... Boo, boo. Oh, sorry. Shinichiro and Tetsuya Watanabe. That's me. And it was written by Mich- Michiko Yokote. Nice. Uh, in Japan, it originally aired on November 21st, 1998, in the U.S. on September 24th, 2001. They took a, a good old week off after uh, after the old 9-11. So, well, so two weeks after last yeah, week's yeah, episode. Yeah, you have to. Unless you're SNL. There are, like, planes exploding and, like, don't buildings, like, windows of buildings get crashed there's through. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's a blow up. I could there's see why, honestly, then. a week seems a little too short, you know? <laughs> Maybe they could have held off. Held off a, a few more weeks. Uh, Listen, and Tsunami said we have to put this out. Let's do some trivia. Did you write down any trivia? I just wrote I down do one have a question, couple trivia questions. And I know you'll know it. Can I just give you mine so you don't take yeah. it? What soda is Jet drinking? Uh, Wasn't it called like Puppy or something? No. Puppy Pup- or something? It's like P or Pet Pepu? Yeah, that's really close. Pipu. Pipu. I'll give it to you though. I'll get I'll get a I get an ice cold can of Pipu. Pipu feels to me like it'd be the name of a British claymation preschooler program about like a penguin yeah. or something. 
They're like, mommy, Pingu? mommy, I want to watch Pipu. <laughs> Did you ever watch Pingu? Do you, is that what it was? You know, Pingu? Yeah, Pingu, the little like claymation penguin. I that's have a what, reaction yeah. photo I, I use a lot of. where he's like angrily making a Valentine's Day card. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I you like send it. it to me all the time. All righty. First question for you. How long ago did Spike die? Oh, shit. I didn't pick up on that. Was, there uh, are going to be a lot of things. Ago. Cool. I know that this episode is packed with so many things, and I do feel like I got it on a base level, but as far yeah. as like, what? how can you not know that by the moon being in this direction, it's been precisely 36 minutes since that happened, so they <laughs> could never have done... Yeah, you know, I'm, there are so many things like that that I, I yeah. didn't pick up on. That's fair. That's fair. Then I don't know if you'll get this one. I think <laughs> you'll get this one, Zach. How long was Spike asleep after falling from the church tower? Why are they lengths of time? I didn't. I don't remember anyone saying anything about lengths of time. After the church tower, is that flashback or is that real time? Flashback? No. When he actually falls out of the church tower. <laughs> well, I was confused by you're gonna have to break down the end to me because I knew what it was telling me in each timeline but the way that it's cut I do get kind of lost in what's happening when when it's sure. like smash cuts to like people falling and crashing it's hard for me to tell like exactly which time it is a little bit yeah at points the the episode real world stuff ends with him getting pushed out of the top of the church tower and right then he wakes up a blank amount of time later and right. Faye is singing over him. Right. But the does he not crash through a window in the flashback too? Doesn't that happen? Isn't that no. how he That's when he, they have that like thing that you want to get an action figure of. Is that the flashback? That's now. No, that was real time. The right. flashback is in like a super heavy black and white sepia tone. But what happens to him at the very end of that? Like how he does he got shot and then like crawled away the crawled and away. That girl's I thought store. he also like fell out of something during that too. Mm -mm. anyway how long was it after he woke up was it because i remember she's like i was getting worried about you um don't make fun of me this is ha like ha, a... ha 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 <laughs> zach didn't pay attention i did two times he watched the episode this, yeah but this is a pretty dense episode zach can't and tell when I didn't things are watch sepia it when I was 10 and i don't watch a lot of this type of animation it all looks zach, all zach the... can't tell what's in black and white black zach doesn't see color most of the tones do look the same to me in this it was 3 days i was i didn't answer i would have answered i would have said <laughs> I... either 3 or 5 days i would have because i do remember her being like i started to get worried about you what why are you laughing at me ha <laughs> ha yeah, Zach, but maybe you, yeah. I'm laughing with you. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, but I'm not laughing and I'm feeling bad about myself. So I don't think that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how that phrase works. <laughs> I don't know. I felt that same way all through like elementary, middle and high school. My mom just kept telling me they were laughing with me, even though I was crying. Yeah, but the nice thing about being an adult is usually your friends don't do that to you anymore. <laughs> Um. What? Now it's my time to do a thing. My internet connection is uh, unstable, so I'm sorry to you, but the audacity is getting it. All. Yeah, audacity's gonna be fine. That's why I, it, it seems like I'm weirdly responding to things because I'm getting about like 75. percent Is it of that what bad? You're yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's been like this should... last few weeks, honestly. Really? Yeah. That is so shitty because I pay so much money for my internet, and it's supposed to be a gig speed. Oh, that sucks, assholes. Yeah. Because, like, I don't think there are very many sentences that I don't miss at least one word. That's insane. I had no idea. Doing a lot of context clues over here. Usually it's uh, really, like, clear to me on my end because I just see my perspective of myself and sure. I see you. And only every once in a while does it say the unstable thing. But today it's saying mm -hmm. it a lot. Uh, That's fucked up. Do you, you should, know? Uh, stop it's... streaming your <laughs> that live feed of your asshole, Zach, to the internet. Well, I did spend the last three <laughs> days live streaming copyrighted content for three hours a night <laughs> without my VPN running. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Well, now it's time for a segment that I really enjoy, but I think has opened up some conversations. I, I, I think what might have been, sorry, what might have been hurting my speed is that streaming software that I use was also still open on my computer. So oh. I think that was slowing it down. Maybe this will help a little. Yeah, you sound you sound clear right now. Already? Okay. So where where did we last leave off? I was this will going probably in... all go in. <laughs> Good. I uh, was was getting ready to bring us into one of my favorite segments that we oh, do shit. on anything that yeah. we do, Zach. Uh -huh. Although it has opened some conversations that I don't think we went into before. Conversations. Uh, mostly because I get what I get and I don't throw a fit. 
on the uh, I wouldn't 100% main show. say that's true. Not lately. I feel like I pretty usually agree with the score given. I'm honestly yeah. normally thinking it's pretty generous. Yeah. You're a generous lover when you want to be. I think maybe... <laughs> I think, and I, I'm just uh, playing for drama. I think maybe with this one, it's that I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm really trying here, and you have, and you think I don't really try? That's, that's yes, where, a that's little bit. Out. Wow, and that's that. why, well, because I know you're like, oh God, Jesus Christ. So this happens, and this happens, and it, it and it, it usually works out well for you. But mine, I'm like thinking about it, so maybe I do feel a little more like well. Let me I, let me ask you this, Zach. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a very similar segment that's on the Scrubs podcast, in which Donald Faison recounts. Yeah, what I wasn't exactly, and they don't even do that anymore. They don't. Wow, I don't they actually know Danny does. But where I was going with that, Zach, is that Did Donald I steal Faison. That? Like raps, he, and he like writes them out and stuff. He writes them out. He like yeah. seriously, serious things about, it. and I think that takes away some of the integrity, the merit behind hmm. it, you know? And you're not doing that, per se. No, and I'm not trying to. Keep going. I wasn't disagreeing with you. Keep going. I wasn't trying to stop you. I was yes-anding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you just, and... And you just full stop. <laughs> and I said no and die in the same sentence. You didn't even say no, just full stop. <laughs> no, go ahead. Period. Uh, and, and I think that I'm a very far into the spectrum from that. And you're in a yeah. nice middle ground there, Zach. Okay. I don't think that hurts you. But what my second I had a second part of my point after you finish mm -hmm. your point. No, go ahead. Also, I think and this is likewise with community, I think because this is something so close to your heart and something that is out of my comfort zone, so I am going to miss stuff that there's a little bit of a disconnect between us. Mm -hmm. Not you really. Like I'm, I'm not hearing your heart's song. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> My heart is just singing its pretty little chords out to you. And, and it's I, falling on deaf ears. And I'm ears. getting That's like what... a fucking C minus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that being I'm said. I'm bearing my loins to you, Zach. That being said, this is an episode that is very dense. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to get it all. And I. It. it, it, it it fills in things that I didn't even know I was supposed to be looking for in this show. So I am going to miss some of it. So let's fucking go. I have, I, right. have, I have not put that much thought into it this time. So this may go horribly. Well, I am excited, Zach. This is a tough Jesus. one. So I, I, yeah. And I will take that into account. The difficulty yeah. is scaled up. It's like mm -hmm. the Olympics. You know, If yeah. you're doing eight quads and you fall three times, you still did five more quads than anyone else out there. So we'll... I will be taking that into account. The difficulty score will be weighted against my own biases. All righty. I'm just uh, panic attacking. I'm not listening 20, to anything you're saying 20 seconds on the clock. Oh, and my internet connection's unstable just as this yeah. happens. Maybe that'll no, work in my I favor. <laughs> Maybe. If you can't Wow, hear Zach, it. I'm going to assume you said some really great stuff there. So <laughs> My um, face all is All right. Like... <laughs> it's time to find out. Oof. Did Zach comprehend the episode this week? I know he watched it because I watched it with surprise. him. Sure. <laughs> All right. You're going to go on Go, as always. Uh, get a little sippy of, of your Bev there. All right. Three, mm. two, one, Oof. go. Uh, this week's bounty is bringing Jet closer to his past and having to reveal it to the people around him. Uh, his former crime syndicate associate has been murdered, and it's it's drawing him closer to it. And the man who he used to work with, who 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 killed him. Meanwhile, Faye goes off searching for this bounty and gets herself kidnapped. Stop. I didn't get to the end at all, but okay. You know, here's here's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. I think you did a good job of talking about some things about Spike. Mm -hmm. You did call him Jet at the beginning of the... Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I was just... Um, uh, but yeah. I knew who you were talking about. And sorry so, you know, about that. Regardless of that little deduction, I did... I like know which one is him. which. Sorry. Um, I appreciate that you got... You did I'm mention so Faye's name. Over. My heart was beating fast. <laughs> I didn't really get much about what happened. That time went by pretty fast, that time. It goes that by really fast. One. Yeah. Um... There's just so much to get into. I only got like the first half of the episode and really like the first third of the episode. Yeah. But cool. I, 
I don't think you did a bad job with what you did say, and you were saying. Yeah, it's things. like it's like what do I I what do I drop to make more yeah, time for? Yeah. I'll give you a C on that one. Like I okay. said, high difficulty score, little adjustment, good job. <laughs> a C? Uh, no, no, that's totally fair. Father's gonna whip me. I love how fucking heated we've been on stuff lately. It's been like a real point of contention. Not really, but as yeah, far as on mic, I think it's been really the fun. Show. Because I do, like, I don't actually get my feelings hurt, but my feelings are in it at this point, you know? And that makes it a lot more fun and exciting for me. Because you feel like I'm giving you a score, not your performance. Well, no, like, I know it's not real, but while I'm here, while it's happening, it is very real. real. I won't remember sure. it tomorrow, but yeah, that was fun. Yeah. We've wasted a lot of time on talking about my internet connection, so let's get into the episode. Steven, I know this is one you've been looking forward to. I know it begins a string of episodes that you really like. Uh, yeah. How does this rank amongst your favorite episodes, and what about it uh, do you love so much? So a, a few things make this one of my favorites. It's probably in or on the edge of my top five favorite wow. Bebop episodes, which I, I will sit down and actually rank them all when, by the time we get towards the end of this. That'd be fun. But... I think that the animation in this episode is great. We were joking about the infamous in the anime community boob physics in this episode because they do move around a lot as opposed to just being suspended. But there is more movement in the animation. Uh, there's yeah. no stiffness to it. I think something that stands out, two, three images that I always think of when I think of this episode. One is the detail on all the guns in this episode. You see oh, sure. like everything down Loading to like, the, the bullets serial and number. Stuff. Yeah, it's just really... Is this the episode where it shows him detail. adding more bullets and, like, pushing down the bullets to put another yeah. one? That's a cool shot. Yeah, I like All of that. that. I love the stained glass window yeah, of the sure. church. I think that's, like, not just the actual drawing of it, but the way they handle the lighting and the composition in the episode, I think, is really yeah. cool and makes everything else seem so dark. Vicious is constantly coming out of the shadows, and we still mm. don't know a lot about him, even though they do show us that at least he and Spike were at least one time on the same side of things. Sure. Even though that side is not necessarily kind of what within we would call that a good side, side on opposing side of things. Yeah. But they weren't like working against each other. Exactly. I mean there's a there's that shot of them like literally like in a gunfight back to back, you know, yeah. shooting off whoever they're fighting. And then of course that image that we were talking about a little bit earlier of Vicious with a sword to Spike's shoulder and Spike that with the cool gun shot. to Vicious. Very epic. Yeah, very cool. You can tell that they knew that they had that image in that mind and they were like, moment. okay, how do we get there? And I think that was cool, too. Which is interesting, because I mentioned to you off microphone that I was pretty surprised that we're only on episode five, and mm -hmm. already it's this, not conclusion, but pretty epic, like, climax to what yeah. was hinted at in the first episode that I thought for sure would be something that the show would, like, rightfully milk for a while. Sure. And, and likewise, and I, I want to they... say... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Likewise, I want to say that I went into this episode a little nervous, because I know you liked it so much, but I was mm -hmm. thinking it was going to be purely flashback yeah and i thought that was going to make me uh, a little bit uninvested with the episode because it was mm -hmm. all flashback but they do a good job of making it in the present and with these characters that we've grown to like and care about while hinting more than just outright telling us exactly i mean it shows us but it, it makes us do a little bit of the math instead of just taking us back to yeah. when everything happened why it happened what's happened and what got us here it's like little flashes of it throughout and i like that well and of course, without saying anything that happens later in the series, yeah. this episode does a really cool job of showing you enough of the story that you get the idea, but still not showing a lot of the story, which I think is, is cool because you see like, okay, this is what happened. Makes this you is want their to connection. See it more. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, well, who is that person that they like obviously highlighted for a second in the story? Do we get to see them again? Yeah. You know, so it kind of makes you ask some questions. I think the introduction of Vicious's character, I really like. Yeah, I do too. He is, if there's an overarching antagonist, it would be him. That's kind of what I figured. That makes yeah. sense. Not a lot of their enemies do pop up again, but Vicious is definitely one that we will see more than once in this show. So I'm excited to have him shadowly in the world now. Sure. Well, something that I'd like for you to do for me and for our listeners mm -hmm. now, and I picked up more than I didn't, but I, since you have the the knowledge of, of the entirety of the series. You've watched it recently and you, you've known it for a long time. Why don't you give us a rundown on what we learned without spoiling what is yet to sure. come, what we learned in this episode that we're going to need to remember? So some important things from the flashbacks are, one, that obviously Vicious and Spike were in the same syndicate. Mm -hmm. 
doing the crimes together, all mm-hmm. that jazz. Doing the crimes. They showed a girl a few times. Yes, um, I didn't. Who will get definitely to mention come that. back into the show later. Yeah, the hottie blondie in the leather getup. Mm-hmm. And they showed her both being around Spike. They also show an image of Vicious in the bed with a blonde-haired woman. Oh, I did not which, see that. Or yeah, that's that a, like a one kind of frame shot that they show. Sure. And then you're also seeing that maybe how Spike met this woman was when he was injured and came to her kind of door. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't really know the timeline of any of the things that are happening in the flashbacks. You're kind of led to believe that maybe when Spike is all shot up, that's when... She's kind of a bystander that sure. that he stumbles into the arms of. Well, and I think the images that they show of her are very different. You see her three times. You see her first in the leather getup, looking mm-hmm. kind of femme fatalish. You mm-hmm. see her in bed with Vicious. Mm-hmm. And then you see her, at some point along this timeline, dressed just as a house person who's taking so care of Spike. So a lot happens, know, so. and it, this is three different times. In exactly. A long, so there's a few different times that are actually being shown here but you don't really know the order sure. in which they you just imagine yet. it's all flashback of a certain vague similar sure time, kind of and you're almost led to believe that this is spike kind of what he's seeing before he thinks he's about to die sure. you know so if you believe yeah, the whole your that. life flash for your eyes thing then it's clear this person is important to spike i also think something really funny this episode does is drawing the parallel when spike wakes up to face singing and he's i was like, just wow, thinking the deaf. same thing that it <laughs> juxtaposes I don't know enough in the future, but it juxtaposes perhaps that Faye is going to be a unlikely more important figure in Spike's life. Mm. That that he remembers this other girl before he dies, but wakes up to Faye like for some type of reason. I would imagine. Yeah. Whether it's romantic or or just like a, a, a fond that's I don't know I don't mm-hmm. know that's just me. In yes. in terms of the the Spike story, now Ryan, have you seen the Kill Bill movies? Sure. I cannot watch this movie, especially now, without thinking of when they come to kill the bride sure. on her wedding day and all that stuff. Because it's a kind of, it's by no means the exact same story. But it's very much inspired it by... It draws a lot of parallels. That whole movie is inspired from all kinds of Japanese animation yeah. and live action. But And definitely. I think especially some of the shots that they have are really reminiscent of... Sure. The way Tarantino did that, which I think is cool. And I mean, there's kill an Bill, animated sequence in one of the films for a reason. Yeah. yeah, and I've thought this way for a long time. As much as I love, 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 love Django, the you like Kill, Kill Bill, Bill better. No, I like I Django think better. I like Kill Bill a little better. But I can see why your path would lead you to that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with those movies. I love those. Kill movies. Bill was also probably my first Tarantino movie that I knew was a Tarantino movie that I Interesting. watched. Interesting. Pulp Fiction was no Django was my first. I saw it in the theater when it came out. Oh, Django's the and shit. And then later I on, Django. I saw Pulp Fiction. I like we'll keep Pulp going. What too. else do we need to remember? I think important things from this episode also are. Jet's starting to talk a little bit about his past. So far, we know that he used to be a cop. We, we know that, that his arm's fucked up not anymore. In this one. Yeah, and that his arm is not... He has, like, a fake arm. Yeah, and they hadn't called attention to it, so obviously I noticed one arm looked different, but I didn't really know the, the extent of it. I thought maybe it was, like, a piece of armor, potentially, or something. Yeah, I think in an earlier episode, Spike might make a comment really? on, like, why do you still have that? Like, they have, like, better technology or whatever. Oh, okay. I He's like, it keeps me... That grounded or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. But Jets basically says that he lost his arm behaving like Spike does, you know, and kind of being reckless and getting ahead of the game and trying to do too much too fast, you know. Yeah. And so he doesn't want Spike to make those same mistakes, but also he and Spike aren't close to a level that he's going to stop Spike from doing mm-hmm. what he's going to do. You know, they just all happen to work on the same ship together. You know, it's not like they're Jet best friends. Jet has this whole aloof thing that's always like, Gotta do what you gotta do. You know, he's mm-hmm. just trying to mess with his bonsai tree. He's not trying to... Yeah. He's not trying to get... He's just trying to chill out when he's not working. And I'm sure coming from his old line of work to this new one, he's kind of lost his desire of being a part of a team, really. Being like... Sure. Uh, having to and look out for his other life people. To, yeah. Yeah. It's not really where he's at right now. And we do get some more Jet stuff in, I want to say, four episodes. So I think the second episode we do... Uh, we get, like a jet-centered story for the first time, which I'm excited for. But yeah, I think this episode's really cool. I think it it definitely doesn't... If you just watch this standalone, it would be... You would have enough information to enjoy the episode for the most part. You may be wondering more stuff. Or almost even like the first episode and then this one would be really good. I think would be a good, like, if you want, okay, Spike story. Exactly. But I think that this doesn't... It's an episode of an anime, 
But it's it it when like I think you know the stereotypical anime, I wouldn't think something like this. This is a much more a grounded, thing of its own. yeah, than Story, I think a lot of other things. Character it's driven, totally. And I think that it it does such a cool job of still being an anime and still having you know anime aspects to it, but also doing an action movie sequence hmm. with a huge climactic explosive ending and different types of action. That's what I liked in this mm-hmm. episode. It wasn't like that slick like. Do 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 do. You know, like yeah. some jazzy stuff going on. It was pretty quiet, or the music was a different type of vocals, a different type of thing. And it, this whole episode feels very dark and feels very mm-hmm. dour. And and a lot of times the 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 violence happens silently, which I think makes it feel a little bit more life or death when it's not like to the timing of music. It's just like these people are getting shot and killed. Yeah, and I thought it was cool. I really liked. I really like this episode, how they, how they did it. How do you feel about the music in this episode? It was different. It wasn't jazzy or as Western sure. throughout most of it. Now, you do get the first appearance of one of my favorite songs in the show, Waltz for ZZ, which plays when he's talking to, um, I can't remember her name, the shop owner, mm-hmm. which kind of quietly. But you also get some vocal music in this episode, which That's is not always the That's the one that I noticed case. the most, and I like that song. Which one? The one with the vocals. That's something that the I Rain noticed. The yeah. Rain by Steve Conti. I so think. not by the band that does most of the music. Yeah, that one is not a seatbelt song. It's one of the rare... Interesting. Yeah, and then at the end, they have kind of the Latin-sounding singing as the you know episode is climaxing. Mm-hmm. But I think it's used really, really cool. And because this isn't a... Ja- like you said, it's not a jazzy episode. This is a dark, like, gritty... Spike was going there with the intentions of killing someone, not with the intentions of like capturing a bounty and getting the reward. No, Spike was going there for personal. There is a bounty on the table today, but it's taken off at the very beginning when he's murdered. Yeah. And it's more about how that leads Spike back to his past rather than them all going mm-hmm. after this bounty, other than Faye, who is motivated by the bounty. Yeah. Yeah, I like this episode. What should we say to wrap it up before we get into our, our captainship? Um, our captainship. Yeah. The only thing I didn't say was Ballad of the Fallen A-Holes, am I right? <laughs> that's funny. funny. Thank you. Yeah, that's all I had. <laughs> Except Spike's the that's only like the one first that's thing I wrote down that he's I not an A-Hole. It's true. Well, isn't... Spike's a little bit of an asshole. That's true, but more in a not-as-annoying Deadpool kind of way. Sure. Yeah. Sure. He doesn't yeah. care about his life, but he's not necessarily immortal. Yeah, and I don't feel like he doesn't care i don't feel like he doesn't care at all about his life he's got the know. glassy-eyed stare of a man with nothing to lose zach don't we all that's what we all aspire to <laughs> well then okay let's see who's in the captainship unless you have something else to say who no who do you have as your captain, captain this week C. zach i think i will give it to vicious i keep wanting to say vision for some reason sure just because he's such an imposing character that definitely leaves an impact the first time you see him and you're like oh who's this guy can't trust this one. I, I want to give an honorable mention, though, to the guy when Faye was trying to get into the concert place who's like, hey, uh, you can't get in here. It was just yeah. like a very overly animated voice performance that I liked a lot. I literally wrote down, Zach, I have Vicious slash the Opera Usher. Opera Are you Usher, kidding me? That's awesome. I am so fucking You're talking about the guy right who, who she first talks to, right? Yeah. We're talking about the same exact thing. Yeah, right he's he's like, hey, you can't get in there. And then he's like, well, I'm not trying to get fucked up. Go ahead. Yeah. And like the way he's like tossing the keys is cool too. But fantastic fucking like over the top voice <laughs> acting. Yeah, hey, exactly. you can't come in here. Where's your ticket, young lady? <laughs> it's great. Huh? You are here for... Yeah, I like that a lot. Mouse. <laughs> yeah. Also, Faye is... Sometimes a really good grifter and sometimes a not good one. I thought she did a good job of like getting into the place, but she was pretty fucked from the second she got there. Well, she just kind of goes in with like my looks and my wit will get me Mm -hmm. where I need to go. And And they they never do. do. Well, they get her there, (laughs) but then she like she has the brains and she has the skills to show up with a plan, but she just thinks she can like titty jiggle her way out of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like time for us to titty jiggle our titty way jiggle out. Titty jiggle our way on out of this. <laughs> yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I, I hope you guys are enjoying this because I'm sure enjoying doing it. And this is just the beginning of Brokeback Bebop, one of the highlights of my week every week. I hope Aww. it is for y- y'all too. Did they do a an end title card on this episode, like a? C- I think it said "See a Space Cowboy." Yeah. Uh. I forget what the very last thing that ha- it's something in that end scene where he wakes up with Faye. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I forget exactly what it was, but there was. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I might have blinked. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Just like I don't know how to start these things, I don't really know how to end these things. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye. See you, space cow days. Nice. Walk in the rain, in the rain, in the rain. I walk in the rain, in the rain, in the rain. Thanks for listening. Support this show and our podcast network at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast, where starting at $5 a month, you can get immediate access to all 40 outrageous sessions of Broke Back Bebop. See you next time, Space Cowboy. Let's go!